what's all the hype about? How come you're all here? What's numeracy? Why aren't you calling this a math conference? At first glance, the concept of numeracy should be simple and straightforward. So how and when did it become so complex? When I was a teacher, back in the 90s, yes, I'm dating myself, I'll never forget the day I was sitting at a staff meeting and they told us that we will have to teach literacy across the curriculum. I looked up and I said, yeah, right, me? I hate language arts. Now, today, we're telling all of you that you need to incorporate numeracy into your content area. Before I tell you about how we can make it work, I want to look back at the history of numeracy. I want to outline some of the key dates, key events in numeracy. Numeracy has been around for a long, long time. In 1959, the Crowther Report came out and coined numeracy to be a companion skill to literacy separate but complementary domains of competencies. This report described numeracy as the mirror image of literacy. Numeracy had to deal with the quantitative aspects of everyday life, and literacy was the ability to deal with demands of reading and writing. In 2000, Lynn Steen identified a range of goals for numeracy within five different dimensions. The dimensions were, you needed to be numerate for practical reasons, meaning you needed to be able to use it for immediate use in the routine tasks of life. In civic, to, so that you can understand major public policy issues. Professional reasons, to provide necessary skills for employment. Recreational numeracy, so that you can appreciate games, sports, lotteries. Cultural, as part of our tapestry of civilization. Wow, everyone has a definition. They all seem to have a common thread, but they're all a little bit different. So where are we on our journey today? How is numeracy defined closer to home? Let's take a look at what Alberta Education has put out. While you're watching this video, think about all the different definitions that you have heard and seen today. Think about how numeracy is present in your daily life. What other examples can you think of when you're watching this video? What characteristics would you say a numerate person has to have?
Alberta Education comes out with their definition. And the def definition for Alberta Ed is numeracy is the ability, confidence, and willingness to engage with quantitative or spatial information to make informed decisions in all aspects of daily life. Alberta Ed has gone one step further. They've included spatial information. Research has shown that starting with spatial thinking and reasoning is very important to understanding mathematics and to become numerate. I remember I was I had a friend in the car and we were driving past and when I looked up at that video I saw the um, the price of gas and I'm thinking well thank goodness we're not a dollar five anymore but I do remember we were driving and she said oh the price of gas dropped by a penny I just filled up and I said yeah so what she goes well if I would have filled up today I would have saved six bucks really like, really? And how do you figure that? And she said, well, it's a penny a liter. How many liters did you put in your car? 60. Six bucks. OK. OK, if you say so. So what does numeracy look like? Numeracy? involves competency in both quantitative and spatial reasoning. Spatial thinking or reasoning involves the location and movement of objects and ourselves either mentally or physically in space. Research on spatial reasoning substantiates the critical importance of spatial reasoning abilities in geometry, measurement, and problem solving, both early in students' mathematics experience as well as later in high school and beyond. Thinking spatially opens the eye and mind to new connections, new questions, new answers. As I was driving here, I listened to the news, and they said that as of this morning, 85,000 hectares are burning in, around Fort McMurray. What does that mean? Well, if you think of um, Edmonton, Edmonton is approximately 65,000 hectares. Right now, we have 85,000 hectares burning out of control just north of us. That is very scary. When we focus on numeracy, we focus on the conversations that go on after the calculations. Numeracy has no content of its own, but it inherits its content from its context. Research. I love this one. Research says that early literacy success is directly linked to later literacy success. Early numeracy success is directly linked to later numeracy and literacy success. It says early numeracy is a better predictor of success than early literacy. Mastery of early math skills predicts not only future math achievement, it also predicts future reading achievement. And it does so just as reliably as early literacy mastery of vocabulary, letters, and phonetics predicts later reading success. The opposite, though. Reading skills, predicting math skills, does not hold up. Numeracy enables us to reach our full potential, to achieve a better quality of life, to contribute to our communities, to discover and make meaning of an increasingly complex and evolving world. Students need the confidence, they need the habits of mind to acquire, create, connect, and communicate information in a variety of contexts. It's time that we start thinking about how we're teaching what we're teaching. It's time that we truly understand that some teaching methods have to change. We can't no longer say, yeah, I know they have to change and I've changed and then go back to your rooms and close the door and say, okay, let's take out our math books. So is numeracy the same as math? Not at all. It's not the same, 
but it's definitely interrelated. All numeracy is underpinned by some math. School math plays an extremely important role in the development of young people's numeracy. This is where the foundation for being numerate happens. It is not watered down math in our other classes. Simply knowing math does not make a person functionally numerate. I have students that were in their high 80s and high 90s in math, but being enumerate, not being able to use anything that they've learned in school to make sense of things. Like the lady I had in my car who said she saved six bucks and was completely um, adamant that yeah, it was six dollars she would have saved. Just like knowing the definitions of words does not make a person literate, or just knowing how to read does not make a person literate. New, knowing rules or algorithms to solve math problems does not make a person mathematically literate or numerate. Just as literacy has now become a larger idea than being able to read and write, it now embraces reading, writing, listening, speaking, viewing, critical thinking, and it is said to exist in many forms described as multiple literacies. Now, numeracy has started to grow. The traditional K-12 math curriculum, where it focused on performing computations, did very little to prepare students for a problem-solving demands of the high-tech workplace. In fact, in real-world situations, individuals will rarely make use of the school-learned math, method, school -learned math methods or procedures. Being numerate goes way beyond doing the sums. It means having the confidence and, and competence to use numbers to think mathematically in everyday life. For example, being able to make estimates, to uh, identify possibilities, to weigh different options, decide which is most appropriate, to choose the correct skills to tackle, to solve the problem. Being numerate supports a, a surprisingly range of areas in everybody's life, whatever the age. Numeracy includes way more than just basic arithmetic. It is way more than numeracy. Number a C. Number a C. So, how do we teach it? Like Steen said in 2000, numeracy has no special content of its own, it inherits its content from the context. So there's three type of knowledge which are relevant to math, which will contribute to a strong foundation for num numeracy. There's the factual knowledge. Factual knowledge is the information that can be learned by memorization and repetition. It's the facts. It's the algorithms. It's the rules. Conceptual understanding is knowing why and how a procedure works and it includes general knowledge and understanding of the subject. Procedural knowledge is knowing how to complete a task when faced with it. Which one of those algorithms do I use when I have this problem to solve? The three types of knowledge, though, mutually s support each other. They're all important to be successful in math. In particular, though, procedural and conceptual are positively correlated. When one increases, so does the other. The call for numeracy in schools is not a call for more math. It is a call for a different and more meaningful pedagogy across the entire curriculum. What about the technology now? This world is really high tech. And because we are high tech, the effect of this technology means there's less demand for math skills. There's a greater demand for mathematical understanding. Where and when do we encounter numeracy? Everywhere. Every day. It's not just for the scientists, the accountants, or the tax men. All professions require a, at least a basic understanding when it comes to numeracy and math. Today's workplace requires creative problem solving usually in collaborative groups, making use of mathematical thinking when it is required. 
it's in order to make the best choices, we need to become numerate citizens.